how do we talk about Al-Aqsa? Allah talks about this land very specifically and talks about this masjid very specifically. Allah calls it Al-Ard Lati Barakna Fiha, the land that we have blessed from within. Wa Barakna Hawla, and we have blessed what is around it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala refers to it in the words of the prophets that came before Al-Ard al muqaddasa the Holy Land. And there is something very specific about that. Imam Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah says, it is called Al-Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, because, because it is Al-Mutahira. It purifies you of all of your sins. When you go to that land and you pray in that land, a place where Ibn Abbas anhu said, you know why Allah blessed that land? He said, you know why? This is the reason. He says, because there is not a single inch in Jerusalem, except that an angel stood there in worship, or there was a prophet that worshiped Allah in that area, or there is a prophet that is buried in that area. This is why it became blessed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's going to take him to that same place that is blessed. And Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes down and he brings with him an animal called al buraq And this animal is so fast, that with every step it reaches the end of your eyesight. Well, you subhanAllah, you have to realize, my brothers, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He could have taken a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam straight to the heaven, but He didn't. He took him to Jerusalem, He took him to Masjid al-Aqsa. He went there because there's something special about it, there's something important about it. Continuing that narration, He says, when we arrived to Jerusalem, Jibreel pointed to the wall and the wall split in half and he tied the buraq in the middle of that wall. Subhanallah, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is witnessing all this. Then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I entered the Masjid al-Aqsa and I prayed two rak'at. And when I finished from the two rak'at, I raised my head and I saw all the prophets there in front of me. Imagine Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, the one who built the Masjid al-Aqsa. Adam alayhi salam, wa Ayyub alayhi salam, wa Musa alayhi salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, they were waiting for me to take my position and to lead them in salah, and I was shy. So Jibreel alayhi salam came and he took by my hand and he took me all the way until he put me in front of them, until I led them in salah. And this is the only time all the prophets gathered in such a manner and he led them in salah. And this is what made the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khayra ummatin ukhrijat lidnas, the greatest of nations that was ever, that ever came about because we led the prophets in salah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from there went up to the heavens, got the commandment of a salat. He came down and he went to his people uh, in Mecca and he began to explain to them and listen to this hadith, how powerful it is. He said, and there will come a time. It's as though Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he knows that a time will come in which the believers will be deprived from Masjid Al-Aqsa for a very long time, just like today. When you're watching those images of stun grenades and you're watching those images of bullets and you're watching those images of settler extremists chanting out that this is theirs and desecrating people in that land. So if it hurts us that we are prohibited from Al-Aqsa, if it hurts those of us who are Palestinian in particular, who can't visit the land of our parents, well, colonialists and their enablers can, then know that Prophet Musa السلام, the most spoken about man in the Quran, also was prohibited. And the Prophet وسلم, said, if I were there, I would show you his grave تحت الكثيب الأحمر, under the red dune, where Musa السلام, was granted that request to be as close to it as possible.